Hello and welcome. My name is Doug Patterson, the Senior Minister at Smithfield United Church of Christ in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I welcome you to our worship video for this week, July the 12th. This week I'm going to be talking about um, stuff, how much stuff we have accumulated in our homes and perhaps in our brains and in our spirits. Who needs all that? That's what I'm going to talk about. But before we actually get started here, just let me say this to you. May the peace of Christ be with you. I have a very, very important announcement to bring your way. We had decided through our church council that we were going to try and uh, start getting back together for corporate worship on Sunday morning. Uh, next Sunday, the 19th of July, and we sent out communications about that via virtual Smithfield, uh, via our newsletter and uh, Facebook uh, and so forth. However, we've had a recent major spike in COVID-19 cases here in Allegheny County. And as such, we have decided that it's just not a good idea for us to even try to do that. So we are not going to get back together for corporate worship. We don't have any immediate plans to do so, but uh, they're on hold and I will let you know, uh, keep you updated as to when we're going to try once again to get back together on Sunday morning. But in the meantime, I hope that you'll continue to uh, worship with us with this video. Now, Jim Varner, our music director, is going to sing for you uh, one of the most beautiful hymns in our hymnal. My experience is that this hymn is virtually unsingable by a congregation, and you're gonna see why in just a moment. So the only way that we really, really, really have an opportunity to hear it is if somebody of Jim's caliber can play it and sing it for us. It was written by Duke Ellington. It's called Come Sunday, and I hope you will just really get into the spirit of what Jim has to bring our way.
Please give attention now to the reading of today's scripture lessons. The first is the 23rd Psalm. I'm going to read to you from the Good News Version, which is a modern day translation of the scriptures. So it's going to sound different to you than what you may be accustomed to. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in fields of green grass and leads me to quiet pools of fresh water. He gives me new strength. He guides me in the right paths as he has promised. Even if I go through the deepest darkness, I will not be afraid. Lord, for you are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff protect me. You prepare a banquet for me where all my enemies can see me. You welcome me as an honored guest and fill my cup to the brim. I know that your goodness and love will be with me all my life, and your house will be my home as long as I live. And now these words from the epistles, and this is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. May you always be joyful in your union with the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Show a gentle attitude toward everyone. The Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Christ Jesus. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of these portions of his holy word. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Let this be a time that we get centered and refreshed in the presence of God. We see life at its best when we notice the radiance of the stars and the brilliant colors nature displays before us. We recognize that we find it difficult to be at our best when we are faced with challenges. May we draw from you, O oh God, as we take a collective breath as people of God and release a deep sigh as we think about the pandemic in our midst and the struggles we have faced so far as a result of it. We realize that we do miss getting to our church and being with one another as we sing and worship together. We remember at this time hospitals in Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas scrambling to serve COVID-19 patients. We pray for our essential workers who grow weary working long hours wearing facial coverings. We pray for COVID-19 patients who are finding it difficult to find a local hospital bed. Countries around us are dealing with similar challenges, like in Brazil, Russia, and India. We tend to close our hearts when we are overloaded with suffering and grief. We build walls around us when fears and anticipatory anxiety overwhelm us. Let our hearts and minds become alive again to be the change that we wish to see in our lifetime. Strengthen us to follow the example of Jesus in the way we bring about respect, acceptance, and equity in our midst. Let your word find a way to enter our hearts and take root so we are empowered to do much more than what we can possibly do by ourselves. Bring us to a higher ground from where we can work through our difficulties and find unity and peace within our communities. May we bear good fruit in our lives so generations ahead of us can see the triumph of the Spirit, and build their faith in truth and goodness and give God the glory. We recognize our individual prayers at this time, prayers for our safety, 
health and well-being. We pray for our loved ones, our neighbors and people around us who are affected by the shutdown. Let your loving presence be our comfort and strength when we seek hope and life energy. Gracious God, hear all our prayers. For in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's ask God to uh, help us through this next segment, okay? So that the things that I'm going to say and the things that you're going to hear might somehow uh, find inspiration and might uh, help us on our faith journey. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Let's ask for that assistance. Amen? Good. Now you may ask yourself, Doug, you started off this video with a beautiful backdrop of uh, green woods. And here you are now. You're in the backdrop of a brick wall. What's up with that? Well, I had to move. I had to change location because it started to rain and it's thundering and I just didn't want to be down there in an open deck with that kind of threat. So I, I moved up here. I know you understand. In Israel, uh, where I've been six times in, in my life, there are two main bodies of water, the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. The Sea of Galilee, the smaller of the two, is full of life. It has fish, it has industry, it has settlements and uh, cities and towns built all around uh, the outside of it. Uh, it. It's a beautiful place. It's a thriving place. There's a lot going on because it's alive. The Dead Sea, on the other hand, the much larger of the two bodies, is in my estimation and the estimation of most people, more beautiful than the Sea of Galilee. The waters are crystal clear, but there's nothing around it. There's, 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 there's no towns around there. There's nothing around there. And in fact, it's called the Dead Sea for good reason, because it's dead. The mineral content is so high that it can't support fish or any other living thing. So it's just dead. Now, why is the one alive and the other one dead? Well, the Sea of Galilee is fed on the one side by the Jordan River. And the Jordan River flows into it, fresh water. And there it's collected in the Sea of Galilee. 
and it supports life. But it also, the Jordan River then flows on out the other end of it. And so there's flow, flow. And this flow of fresh water provides life. Then the Jordan River continues down to the Dead Sea and it goes in on one side, but there's no outlet. So there's no place for the water to go. And this is why through the centuries that has collected all of these salts, all of these minerals. And this is why it can't support life. And so beautiful as it is, it's dead. Now this is such a great illustration for life itself, maybe for your life and maybe for my life. What provides the great things for us in life? It's, it's flow. We have to take things in and we have to, to, you know, use them. We have to appreciate them. We have to enjoy them. But at some point we have to let them go. They have to go out the other side because if not, they're just collected there and they do us no good. If we're like the Dead Sea, which many people are, it's huge and it's beautiful and it's very attractive, but there's nothing going on there. Maybe you feel like either one of these on any given day. You understand what I'm talking about? You get what I mean? All right. So, Sea of Galilee, fresh, alive, because there's something coming in and something going out. Dead Sea is dead because it just comes in, but it doesn't go anywhere. Now, this is a descriptor of uh, how many people physically live their lives. Have you ever seen that um, television show called Hoarders? I haven't seen one of those all the way through, but I've seen enough portions of it to know that it's a show that, that has features people who have some kind of chronic illness. Really, it's a psychological disease, really, an emotional disease where they cannot let go of anything. They accumulate things, they collect things, they keep things, they're meaningful. Their life's not complete without it. But because it doesn't ever go anywhere, it just piles up, piles up, piles up until eventually their homes are filled literally to the ceiling and busting out the top with what most of us would call junk. But to them, it's life, hoarders. There's no way to live. Well, physically speaking, I think all of us uh, from some at some point or another have suffered from that just a little bit because the, the things that we own are meaningful to us. Uh, but if that gets out of hand, it, it, it's not any good. Well, physically, that's one thing. Uh, but what I want to talk to you about today is the mental aspects of that and more importantly, the spiritual aspects of that. What is the flow like in your life of mental, intellectual things? What is the flow like more importantly in your life in spiritual things? Do you hold on to them and let them fester and die? Or do you use them and let them go so that they can benefit somebody else as well? Now, this is why I think it's so important for us not only to uh, take good things in, but it's important for us to let things go as well. How do we let these things go? Well, number one, if, if you have a lot of junk in your house, you can do what Ramona and I did many years ago. We called the, uh, the company here that comes and collects our garbage every week and asked them to deliver a big, huge dumpster, which they did. They brought it and put it in our driveway. And we had a field day, man. I mean, we just threw all kinds of stuff away. I thought there's no way we're going to fill even uh, that dumpster even halfway up. But <laughs> believe me, it was packed by the time it left here. And after it left and we had gone through our things and, and thrown uh, most of it away and given some of it away, we felt so good, you see, because we had breathing room. We had breathing room. Now, Spiritually speaking, you got to do the same thing. You got to call in a dumpster from time to time. And this is what we call things like forgiveness. You see, you hold on to all these grudges and all these bad feelings that you have. You hold on to those. They're going to kill you. Believe me, they're going to kill you. They're not doing you any good. And this is why Jesus talks about forgiveness 
over and over and over again and says to his disciples, I'm giving you the power to forgive because you've got to let that stuff go. Because if you don't, it just accumulates and gets you. So you have to have a dumpster. You have to have forgiveness in your life. You have to have the ability to let it go. And this only comes to us, I think, through grace that God gives to us. Grace. The other thing that uh, we can do, uh, that we do to uh, get rid of all the baggage that we carry around, is literally to get away. Now, not everybody has this privilege and this opportunity, and I understand that, but my family is very privileged in that every year since Ramona and I have been married, 23 years now, every year we've made a point to take our kids, and now our kids and our son-in-law and our grandchildren, and we take girlfriends and we take boyfriends and we take a bunch of people to the beach and everybody looks forward to it and we have a great time but here's what happens to me when I go to the beach through the years I have narrowed it down more and more and more and more until now really all I really take for myself is a duffel bag with about uh, four or five t-shirts in there a couple pair of shorts some flip-flops, some, uh, you know, some soap and things like that. And once we get down there to the beach, I have everything I need. And I will always think to myself down there, it would be so great just to stay on vacation, you know, for the rest of my life. I don't even need to go back. I don't need all of that stuff. Now, when I get back and I see with different eyes all the things that I own, I'm always overcome by, who needs this? Who needs all this stuff? You got to get away. You just have to get away. This is why it's important that if you're cramming your head and your spirit full of bad news every day, if you're cramming your life full of social media, if you're cramming your life full of things that don't matter and you're not letting them go and you're not stepping away from it from time to time, That'll get you too. It's healthy from time to time to not listen to the news for a few days. It's healthy if you're not addicted to it, and most of us are. It's healthy to step away from social media. It's healthy to step away because once you do and you let go of those things, you see, then when you come back to it, you realize, I, I didn't need all this. Who needs this stuff. Who needs it? Well, we have to let go of things and we have to see things through different eyes. And I want to suggest to you this week, as I seemingly do every week, is this is why things like prayer and meditation are so important, because when we take these things seriously, you see, it's a way of us letting go. It's a way of us stepping back. It's a way for us to look at the world and look at our life and our relationships and all the problems and difficulties we have through a different lens, through the eyes of God, so to speak. And this is why I resonate so deeply with the psalmist who says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. I have everything I need. And the writer in the New Testament who says, I ask God in prayer for whatever I need, and I have, because of that, a thankful, thankful heart. Okay, I don't want you to be a hoarder. I want you to be healthy. I want you to be alive. I want you to be able to look at the world through, through God's eyes and to be so grateful for the beauty and for the life of this world. I know we have problems. I know we have difficulties. I know how maddening it can be. But you, you see, can understand that God did not put you on this earth to be miserable and to be crammed full of junk. He put you on this life. He put you in this life, in this world, you see, to enjoy all of its goodness and what you need. 
that's it. Now, I tried to get away from the rain, and now it's cleared up and it's beautiful again, but that's the way it goes. So thanks a lot for stopping by, and uh, we'll talk to you again, all right? God's peace be with you. Amen. I'm very pleased and happy that you chose to join us this week, and I hope that you'll join us again next week as we continue with our virtual worship video series from Smithfield. Go now in grace and peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're refugees from certainties on which we can't rely. Required by necessity we cast the past aside we know there's widespread suffering how can we know its depth we long for lives we've lost and make do with what's left In this world, seasons change That happens, come what may I believe with all my heart There'll be better days Together in this wounded world Can we not ease the pain From these hard and troubled times Make hope for better days In this world the seasons change That happens come what may I believe with all my heart there'll be better days. I believe with all my heart there'll be better days.